I'm Tom Stafford, retired Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs <clears throat> and a fellow member of the Forever Club. I want to welcome you to the Forever Club weekend. Thank you so much for joining us for this tour of Thompson Hall. I believe that this building is one of the most beautiful buildings on our campus and it's also one of our most famous. The building opened in 1929 as State College's first standalone gymnasium. Enrollment had grown to a point that a new a gym facility was needed and this building opened in 1925. When it opened, it was the home for physical education. It also served as, sort of as a student center. Programs and uh, concerts and dances and large meetings were scheduled in, in this building. So it served as a home for a lot of different activities at the college. It also was the home of the State College basketball team. They played uh, in this gym right behind where I'm standing today. Now, in 1946, something very significant happened at State College. The college hired a new basketball coach, and I'm sure you all know who that was. Everett Case came to State and began to coach the team, and they played in this building. He recruited players from the Midwest, and all of a sudden, the Wolfpack became a very strong team and began to beat everybody. And the interest in basketball began to go through the roof. Prior to that time, football was the primary sport on campus, but when every case came to State College, he changed that. And uh, there's one famous uh, game that was scheduled in this building. I think it was against Duke. It was either Carolina or Duke. I think it was Duke. Uh, and the interest was so high that people um, sneaked through open doors without tickets. They climbed through any open windows that might have been found. And the gym was packed. The fire marshal heard about it. He came over, took one look at the crowd, and he canceled the game. There's a very famous photograph taken in the front of this building with a sign on it that says, Game Canceled, and it shows some very upset uh, men who had planned to come in for that game. In 1949, the men's basketball team moved out of Thompson Gym over to Reynolds Coliseum, and in 1963, the physical education department moved out of Thompson Gym over to uh, Carmichael Gym. And at that time, the building was turned over to University Theater and the Craft Center. Now, this beautiful, uh, famous building was named for Frank Thompson. He was a really great athlete at State College. Uh, after he uh, graduated, he coached some of our teams. And uh, when World War I broke out, he was in his early 30s, but he uh, en uh, enlisted, he joined the uh, military, and he was killed in action in France. And so the college decided in 1925, when this building opened, to name it in honor of Frank Thompson. Okay. I'd like to uh, introduce Joshua Reeves, who is the director of University Theater, one of the two uh, occupants of the building today, to give us an idea of uh, what an incredible theater program we have on this campus. We are standing right now in the place where big time basketball at the collegiate level began in the South. The excitement that every case brought was started right here in this building. So I'm uh, pleased to be here and I'm also very pleased to introduce Joshua Reeves, who's the director of University Theater, 
one of the two major uh, occupants of the building today. And uh, Josh is gonna give us a real treat. On his birthday, he's gonna take us on a tour of Thompson Theater. Awesome, thank you, Dr. Stafford. Yes, uh, my name is Joshua Reeves, director of University Theater here at Frank Thompson Hall. And uh, as Dr. Stafford said, we occupy the building uh, along with our, our neighbor, the Craft Center. We offer uh, two different theater spaces here and all of our shops, as well as classroom spaces and rehearsal spaces. So uh, if you're ready to go, we can take a look at the space. I am ready to go. All right. Lead the way. As we enter the theater lobby, I'd like to stop for a moment and show you a tribute that has been uh, posted in this building to Everett Case and uh, his uh, early basketball teams that created so much excitement about basketball at State College. And also, there are photographs on this display that show some of the other activities that took place in this building. Uh, and here's the photo that I mentioned about that famous game that was canceled because uh, so many students and other folks sneaked into the building through uh, unauthorized uh, locations to see that game. There was a tremendous amount of excitement about that game, but the fire marshal shut it down. All right, let's uh, catch up with Josh and continue the tour. Yeah, so here we are in our grand lobby of Thompson Hall, and this was actually the inside of the gym that Dr. Stafford was talking about. In fact, you can see up here on the wall, the broken brick, that's where uh, a track, yeah, used to go around the entire building. And um, basically we've opened this up to be a theater, uh, a lobby for two of our theaters. So our first theater here is the Titmus Theater, and it's a 198 seat theater that the majority of our productions take place in. And further down the hall, we also have the Kennedy McAwee Studio Theater, where we have a handful of other productions throughout the year. Every year during the uh, school year, we are doing four main stage productions, which you can see kind of cataloged along the wall. A lot of our students love to come back and see their, their, themselves on the wall, <laughs> and they slowly make their way down. So every year we're shifting them down, and eventually they fall off in about five years. Back in 2008, the theater shut down and we started our, our two-year renovation of Thompson Hall and reopened uh, 2011 with a brand new space like this that allowed us to have these two theaters in one building. The catwalk system was put in, a fully functional system that allows us to hang lighting, scenery, everything we want to make sure that the productions go off without a hitch. We also got a state-of-the-art sound system, projection system, and right down the hall is the shops that allow us to bring us right through these large doors, all the scenery we need to make sure these productions happen. So as one of two occupants in the building, the craft center is located right below us. And oftentimes during our musical rehearsals, when the students are dancing and stomping up and down, the craft center gets a little noisy. In fact, our floor is the ceiling, which you'll see later when you're down in the craft center, that you can literally see our floor right above your heads in the craft center. And in here is the Kennedy McAwee Studio Theater, named after uh, Katie Kennedy, a major contributor, and John McAwee, the former director of University Theater here at NC State. This is our 100-seat studio space that allows us to do a little bit more intimate work with our students and the patrons who get to see shows a little closer and a little bit more uh, involved with the production that we put on in this space. This space is actually part of what used to be part of our shop that happened in here before the renovation. In fact, the Titmus was reoriented during the renovation to make room for a space like this here in Thompson Hall. And so here we are in the summer, that now that we don't have any productions going on and we get a little chance to, to set, sit back and, and relax a little bit, the people in the shop, they put up a basketball hoop in here and, and kind of harken back to the space's origins as an actual basketball gymnasium. So we play this, uh, this space becomes a little bit of a recreational space for the staff and students during the summer. So here in the shop, our students learn how to use all sorts of new equipment. We have got a ton of saws from table saws, the chop saws. We even have a ShopBot CNC router, which allows us to cut out different patterns of anything from wood that can be created in a computer design program. They put this stuff together like a jigsaw puzzle and put it on stage. It's pretty amazing how, 
how this piece of equipment has really revolutionized how we do theater here at University Theater. I had almost forgotten about these ties, and so I'm excited to see them here in the theater. These are some of my ties that I like to wear to support the uh, arts at NC State. These were purchased by my good friend Lou Rental at one of our uh, auctions to uh, support the arts, and uh, he donated them to uh, University Theater. Really like this one, this is Andy Warhol. So here we are moving up to the second floor of Thompson Hall, which houses a classroom and our costume shops, as well as our two control booths for both of the theaters. Down this hall, we've got storage for all of our hanging frames and a bunch of shoes. This whole line of cabinets houses all of our shoe stock for all of our costumes that we put on for our productions. On the other side of the wall are a bunch of frames and mirrors that are all cataloged, and so we're able to go through and look and pick out what do we need for a particular set or a particular show, like this mirror right here or maybe some of those paintings over there. So right now we are in between the two theaters. To, our, to my right is the Titmus Theater. This wall right here is actually right next to the uh, seating. And this wall is the studio theater, right next to the seating in there. And they are actually isolated acoustically, so we can actually put on two shows at the same time without disturbing one of the other productions. Up here, again, we have our shoes. These are all the shoes we have in stock, along with a handful more elsewhere. But this allows our costume designers and our students to come through here and just say, I need, I'm looking for size 7.5 metallic shoes. Here they are. So it's like a DSW up here. And then again to the right, to your right, there to my right is the um, bunch of pictures and frames that we've collected over the years. Most of these come from donors or we are actually purchasing them or building them ourselves. And up here in our sound booth for Titmus Theater is where we control all the microphones, all the speakers for the productions. Typically we have a student up here that is running sound cues, doing all sorts of dog barks or car screech. And also during our shows in which we use microphones, they'll be up here controlling those individual actors so that we can hear it throughout the entire space. <laughs> Typically our shows contain, you know, have anywhere from eight to 32 actors, but behind the scenes, much like inside this booth or in the shops, or backstage, there can be anywhere from eight to 15 crew members making sure that show goes well. They could be in the catwalks pointing a light for a spotlight or sitting at one of these tables um, actually calling the show. They'll follow along in the script making sure that the actors are saying what they're supposed to, but as soon as they say a particular line, they hit a button and that dog barks or that car screeches. Up here we have our costume shop. This is where we build our costumes, where we are bringing in rented costumes and making alterations. We fit our students and make sure their measurements fit. And then we also employ students up here with our costume technician and our costume designer and shop manager. Up here we are producing two to three costumes per actor per show on a regular basis. We also have a large stock of costumes downstairs in our costume storage. And this is also where we teach classes. So our stagecraft class and our costume design class happen in these spaces where the students can actually manipulate and play with the actual costumes and, and the, the tools that they have. So around we have all sorts of uh, forms right here throughout the uh, space. We've got all types of uh, feather boas, some shawls. I mean, who doesn't need a feather boa, right? We've got sewing machines, we've got what's called a serger that allows us to cut and sew at the same time. A ton of, uh, well not a ton, but three or four industrial irons, because we're constantly doing laundry here. Every night those, after the show, those costumes come off the actors and they get washed over here by our costume crew in, in our uh, laundry room and dye vat back there. So we're able to dye things as well. So we bring in the, uh, the fabric, lay it out, pattern it, cut it, sew it, dye it, fit it and show it, so that's what we do. So coming around here is uh, one of the final spaces in our 
in, um, in the building. This is our classroom and studio space. So this is where all of um, our design courses are, are happening. This is where our meetings are happening, production meetings for shows, all sorts of design courses, scene design, lighting design happens here, and our stagecraft class happens up here. So here we are in one of our two dressing rooms that service both theaters. Um, here we've got uh, enough room for up to 16 students or actors in here. We also have uh, the ability to watch the, the actual footage from this TV uh, right here so we can see what's going on on stage as well as hear what's going on on stage so our actors aren't missing their entrances from stage right or stage left. We actually just did a production, an outdoor production. It's, it was called Devise 2020, a student written piece. They spent the last year of 2020 and 2021 writing about their experience in a pandemic year and all the other events that have happened during 2020 and 2021. And these are two uh, costumes that were built. Uh, I think you could kind of tell what they are, but they are coronaviruses. So Dr. Fauci actually took Corona out during the production with a shot straight to the gut. So it was pretty, uh, pretty good experience for everyone. Okay, now that we have uh, been through Thompson Theater and you've seen all the backstage uh, spaces, I, I hope that you will take uh, the opportunity to attend one or more of their productions. They're really excellent. Uh, my wife and I come to every single production. Okay, we're going to leave uh, the theater now and go out the front door of Thompson around the corner and go into the craft center. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. This is Joe Allen Westmoreland, Hi. Assistant Director or Associate Director of the Craft Center. So you're going to show us uh, all around this wonderful facility. The Craft Center has been in this building for about 67 years now, but it also existed over at uh, the Earl Cloyd Wing of the library prior to that. So we've been around a long time and we provide a wonderful facility for the students of NC State, the faculty, staff, and the general public to come and express their creativity through a wide variety of fine traditional craft work. Um, we have a clay studio, a wood studio, a wood shop studio. We have a photography dark room, and we have jewelry and metals, glass studio, fiber studio, and we do some other crafts that are not in any of those studios, not like some leather work, um, and, um, we also have mixed media, that's the one I was forgetting, mixed media. Okay, so we'll take a quick tour here and uh, show you what we've got. Right now, uh, we're not yet open for the day, so it's kind of quiet, but it'll give you a good chance to see what each of the facilities we offer looks like. So right now, as you're coming through the Craft Center entrance, um, we have a commons area that we call it. It's also our gallery space. Right now, during the pandemic, we're not having any, haven't had any live um, exhibits, so it's kind of just filled up with our PPE, our protective equipment um, that we use in different classes, screens and whatnot to, to separate students and teachers. So, but we'll walk through and take a look. And I think we'll start with the, with the um, clay studio and walk around the building and end up down in the wood shop. Okay, all right. You wanna leave Let's, go. Let's yeah. go, okay. Ceramics, clay, and pottery first. This is our front desk area where uh, we have student attendants that work here. Um, we, we employ a lot of the student workers as attendants here at the front desk, helping with uh, our pottery kilns and mixing glazes and also uh, in the wood shop. So we employ a lot of NC State students here. Come on down this way. This is our pottery pickup area where students uh, come to pick up their pots when they're fired. Uh, so you have some bisque pots in the back that haven't been glazed yet and some glazed pots here in the front ready for pickup. And this is our pottery studio. So come on in. The pottery studio is the most popular studio here at the Craft Center, followed closely by Woodshop. Um, so we have over 200 or more people that use the studio on a regular basis um, throughout the semesters. 
Uh, this is our pottery uh, wheel area for pottery classes. We have uh, enough room for 12 students on a normal, uh, in a normal semester. Right now we're down to a lower amount of students for social distancing. And uh, we have a TV and an overhead camera to help with the, uh, visualization of how the potter is working. Uh, over here we have a courtesy wheel area where people can come and practice when there's a class in session. And then back here we have um, our hand building and sculpture area. And we offer also uh, our glazing area over here. We mix all our own glazes here. We fire to um, cone 10 in a traditional manner in a gas fired kiln. And you can see examples of all the glazes in the back. So um, it's quite popular. We have a lot of interesting clay. The windows are along Jensen Street here, we have 17 windows. We call it our street gallery. Um, this summer we're introducing a new, pro new program. We're calling it the Members Made Street Gallery. And we are offering um, windows for display to any of our members, Craft Center members or students or participants, instructors, whatever. They can each have their own window to fill with their own craft and uh, offer it for sale or just for display. So that'll be starting up here when we open the summer semester on May 19th. And we're going to be changing it out every semester. So lots of things to see there. So come take a look. Okay. Now this area that we're in used to be the locker room for the gymnasium. And um, the original floor can be seen in several different sections of this room. The original terrazzo is, yeah, it's yeah. weathered well. <laughs> it lasts a long time. Yeah. So in the kiln room here, we have um, our large gas firing kiln that we use for um, our glaze firings. It's a four burner gas kiln, reduction firing. And over here, we have four of our electric kilns that we use for bisque firing. Prior, and that's, we fire the pots to bisque state, then they get glazed, then they come back and go through the glaze kiln. This glaze kiln um, has a central cart that moves out on these railroad tracks. And on that cart is where we load all of the pots on different shelves and stack them from the smallest pots up to the tallest pots. And then the whole cart can roll right into the kiln and we can lock it in place and fire and then wheel it out to unload it. It's very, it makes it very easy for us to have a quick turnover in terms of loading and unloading the kilns and keeping up with demand in the studio. Ah, here we go. So this is a bisque kiln that's been loaded and ready to fire. The pots are still what we call greenware, and they haven't been fired um, before. This will be their first firing, and then they'll be ready to glaze. These kilns fire up to about 17 or 1800 degrees to go to the bisque state. And it takes about a day and a half to do this. Um, the Craft Center has a, a membership program, so um, you can take classes here. We encourage that. Um, but once you've taken a class and you've become knowledgeable about using the studio or a little more proficient at the craft, then you can purchase a membership, which allows you to come in any time when there's not a class in the studio and work at your own pace and make products or make like pottery or jewelry or glass or whatever you want to make. Fire it here in their kilns as necessary and you know just explore the craft as much as you want to. You can continue to take intermediate level classes or, high, or other beginning level classes um, or classes in other studios. Your membership counts for one studio, but you can have memberships in more than one studio. Okay, so we have a mixed media studio. Uh, we do mixed, various mixed media, uh, printmaking, um, screen printing, watercolor painting, acrylic painting, drawing, uh, you name it, it's in there. Um, it is one of the few studios you don't have opportunity to have a studio membership in because it can't be set left set up for any one particular medium um, and that's in use almost every night and every weekend for uh, classes and workshops but you can try a wide variety of things from beginning level through more advanced levels we've done paper making and um, a wide variety of other things even leather working we do some leather making it, or leather working in there too Here. This is um, what we call our photo studio. Uh, it's a room basically that can be used for um, photographing your artwork or portraits or whatever. 
why don't you take a photography class here. Um, and we have backdrops and lighting that can be synced to your camera. Um, so it can be rented by appointment and there's a, a fee for using the studio. Um, and then we do a few classes on how to photograph your artwork. From This is a multimedia classroom, um, and uh, basically we use it for any class that we just don't have room anywhere else to teach. <laughs> but primarily we use it for sewing classes, uh, digital photography classes. It has both these studios, the mixed media studio and this studio have uh, large screens on the walls um, that can connect to your computers or cameras for showing um, close-ups of work. Uh, knitting is one we use a lot of camera work on because it's easy to, to look over the instructor's shoulder so that students can see close up how she's manipulating the, the knitting needles or the crochet hooks to make the stitches without everybody having to get up and gather around her. So um, we've even been teaching a class on houseplant care and maintenance and that's the kind of thing that would happen in this studio. We also use it for meetings. It's available for meetings and uh, special events. Down the ramp, we watch your step. On this level, we have all of our big power tools. So we have large lays, we have band saws, we have scroll saws, we have um, various um, miter saws and band saws, anything you can think of there. We've got drill presses, we have sanding equipment, uh, we have um, belt sanders and hand sanders. Um, we have, on the other end of the building, we have um, a uh, joiner. Um, jointing pieces of wood. We have a uh, CNC ShopBot router, which is a pr programmable router that can do carvings in or carving out wood or doing all of your uh, router joints instead of having to do routing by routering by hand. So this is um, this is the desk area where you would come to check out your tools or ask for assistance that's needed. And we always have a desk attendant on duty here to kind of supervise what's going on in the shop to maintain uh, safety and make sure everybody is working safely and has everything they need. This is my favorite place in the craft center. Um, this is the wood shop, as you already know, but I am standing on the edge of what used to be NC State's first swimming pool and the original tile for the uh, pool is still here, right out there. And uh, I'm standing on the uh, marker that uh, indicates that the pool is six feet deep right here. So I'm standing right on the edge of the pool. And the main part of the pool was covered over with concrete to provide uh, additional flooring space for the craft center. Before that, this was a rifle range, and you uh, laid on the, on the side of the pool right there, and you fired at targets at the other end of the pool. So uh, this is a really cool place. Most people have no idea that there was a swimming pool in this building, and uh, they never get to see what it looked like on the top. And then most people never get to see what it looks like on the inside, but that's where we're going to go right now. I would point out that this was the uh, deeper end of the pool, and as you went that way, it was uh, more shallow. And over on that side is where the diving board was located. You can see the uh, holes in the tile that um, held the diving board in place. Back in 1925, when this building opened and this pool uh, opened, the uh, students who were enrolled at State College were required to take a swim test, and if they didn't pass, they had to take a, a PE course in swimming. And um, back in the early days, there were no women around, and so lots of the guys who took that test uh, remembered that they took, uh, that they did so without any bathing suits on. When I first heard that story, I wasn't sure it was true, but I've talked to enough guys who were there and who did that who have confirmed that report. Okay, let's go uh, 
outside and around and down, and I'll, I want you to see what it looks like inside that pool. Some of you who are familiar with campus may remember there was another big oak tree here at the end of Thompson Hall uh, on the corner there, and we lost that oak tree a, few, a couple of years ago, uh, and it had to be removed. And in, in its place, though, the, the University Theater and the Craft Center have now got this wonderful new little Thompson Commons area that we can use for outdoor events. Um, so we're very pleased to have that. Okay, you guys are going to have to watch your step. These steps are very narrow, and there's also because they're very old, uh, um, also some chips out of them in places. So watch your step as you come down. Careful going over that. It floods down here sometimes, so. Come on. Okay, we are now inside the swimming pool. Uh, where I'm standing right now, the water was about nine feet deep. The uh, diving board that I pointed out upstairs was right above that, <coughs> above the ceiling right there. So uh, when you pass the swimming test, you jump in on this end and swim all the way down to the other end. So if you look that way, you can see how long the pool uh, was. It's a pretty, pretty long pool. So it's used for uh, storage for some items now. But uh, basically the uh, pool uh, remains as it was when the building opened and the pool opened. There's another section on the other side. This gives you another view. There's some lights on at that end. That's the shallow end up there. And the nine feet deep section is behind me. So they built the uh, concrete block wall right in the middle to uh, give support for the floor for the craft center. So it's a really, really cool place uh, on the NC State campus. Thank you very much for joining us for this tour of one of NC State's most beautiful and most historical and famous buildings on the campus. In addition, you've gotten a good look at our theater program and our craft center and the opportunities that are there. Uh, if you have a chance, I hope you'll take in a theater production. They're really fabulous. Or I hope you uh, can visit the craft center and uh, find a craft that you could pursue there. Thank you for being with us and uh, congratulations to all the new members of the uh, NC State Alumni Association Forever Club members. Congratulations and thanks for being with us.